Island as friends and leave us family. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. You are listening to WMNHLP, Manchester's radio, broadcasting at 95.3 megahertz frequency modulation from the top of 1000 Elm Street. Our studios are located at 1045 Elm Street and licensed to Manchester Public Television Service in Manchester, New Hampshire, USA. Contact us by email at WMNH953 at gmail.com or through our website, at WMNHradio.org.
Hey there. Teardrops fall on the deck Heaven's gates have went unchecked Coral rays and floral scents Fill the air through an open vent A fog hangs from overhead Calls your name from your bed A siren sings her overture You weren't sure but you noticed that You've fallen way down There's no way out, it seems Suddenly you're standing on a scale that never fails Weighing your soul next to a feather Look down to the ground, you're about a thousand feet above the clouds Just holding on to thin air Bring you home and steer you in To where it ends and you begin A ball of clay, a formless limb An unobscured amorphous twin You formulate the words to try to justify for your sins As a crowd of judges dressed in stolen robes Stare down their noses for your skin Standing on a scale that never fails Weighing your soul next to her feathers Look down to the ground You're about a thousand feet above the clouds Just holding on to thin air
Hey, everybody. Welcome. Here we go. It's that time again. Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. Uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it is Wednesday, February 15, 2023. Uh, in just a couple of moments, uh, we're going to have uh, Heather is going to be calling in to talk about the big event at the Hop Knot on uh, Saturday morning uh, that uh, that uh, Jenny is uh, uh, participating in and has been asked to uh, to, to speak at. So uh, we will get to that. And then in the second hour, we're going to be joined by Nick Rolzer or Rolser, uh, it's uh, R-O-L-S-E-R. I will, uh, when he's here, I will ask him, what is the uh, precise, uh, precisely correct pronunciation of your name? It's probably Rolser, but it could be Rolser. Or he might answer to both, who knows? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so lots going on today uh, on the program. Um, uh, and uh, if, I, if I don't sound like myself, I apologize. I, uh... Oh, she's, oh, I'm sorry, Jenny is attending, not speaking. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Jenny, I misunderstood. I thought you were speaking. I might be a little, uh, I'm, I'm not myself today, and I, and I apologize, everybody. I'll just <clears throat> I'll just tell you right up front, I'm not feeling well. Uh, it's not COVID. I just have some other kind of nasty bug, apparently. Uh, I was, man, yesterday's show, I was struggling to get through it, and uh, I'm struggling right now. <laughs> I feel like I could just, I feel like I could just lie down and go to sleep for 12 hours, um, But uh, but we'll get through it. But I'll just I'll just go ahead and come clean right up front if you're wondering why uh, uh, Matt sounds a little uh, a little off. Um, and no, Melanie, it's not that. How dare you? <laughs> Melanie in the uh, chat room was asking in the uh, and I, although I appreciate your concern. Uh, no, this shall pass. But what you're talking about does not. It's all about suppression, uh, from what I understand. Not that I would know. I just know that from seeing some of those uh, commercials on television. It's all about suppression. Uh, J Fed say, says, uh, people with COVID usually say it's not COVID. Oh no, 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 no. Um, God, I've, I've been, I've been very careful actually, but, um, and, and vaccinated. I've, I've had, uh, like, uh, 11 boosters. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's what, that's like the thing now, like anti-vaxxers will say like, how many boosters have you had? Like 11? It's like, uh, no. Anyway. Ooh, yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't feel well, <laughs> but it's cold and flu season on top of everything else. So, but, uh, we shall, uh, we shall persevere. Um, but, uh, I won't give the uh, phone number yet because, uh, Heather is going to be calling. Uh, she's supposed to be calling it. Well, actually now she should be calling any second, uh, four fifteen. but, uh, but uh, I will give you the text line, uh, six, uh, six, one, seven, nine, one, seven, four, four, seven, six. Uh, you can tweet me at Matt Connerton or uh, send an email to Matt at MattConnerton.com. Uh, Nancy Clayton says, go home, put on a best of show and go. Oh, believe me, Nancy, if we didn't have, uh, if we didn't have guests uh, scheduled, I, I would have been very tempted to, uh, to uh, uh, let Peter White know I'm not going to be in today. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but we do have guests and I, I don't like to disappoint anybody. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, when you're a, uh, when you're a broadcaster, you don't want to, you don't want to miss a show unless you absolutely have to. So, um, but, uh, Oh, the, Oh, that reminds me too. Uh, I wanted to mention just quickly. Uh, so regarding this Friday's, uh, regarding, uh, this Friday's, uh, retro spectrum radio with Pauly C, uh, I have some good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is I will not be there, uh, for that. Uh, uh, because, uh, I have something else I have to, uh, attend to, uh, on that evening. Uh, so I'm going to have to miss the show, but the good news is in my stead, is it stead or steed it's stead, right? In my stead will be a familiar voice to those of you who are fans of that program. Dan Randall of Dan Randall and the Randlets making his grand return. If only for one night only, I'm not sure, but, uh, Dan is going to be in for me. So, the role of Matt Connerton will be played by Dan Randlett. Uh, so, that will be uh, Friday night on Retro Spectrum Radio with Pauly C. Oh, Eric Pilcher says, uh, speaking of best ofs, the people are wanting a best of classic film reviews. Ah, uh, yes. 
Oh, Melanie is uh, very excited that Dan will be here Friday night. Melanie, uh, particularly uh, a fan of uh, Dan Randall, of Dan Randall and the Randlets. Um, I need a gulp of water here. Mm. By the way, I just saw in the chat room, uh, EZG mentioned that uh, Jerry Jarrett died. Uh, Non-wrestling fans won't have any idea who that is, but that is uh, sad news. So uh, rest in peace, uh, Jerry Jarrett. Uh, Let's see. Oh, this is uh, this is Heather on the line. Hello, Heather. Welcome. Hey, Matt. Can you hear me all right? I can. Yes, you sound great. Welcome to the program. Thanks. I'm having a little hearing you. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. Well, I got you on full blast, though, on my phone. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I don't know why, but we'll uh, we'll try to muddle through. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, no worries. Well, you're you're going to be doing most of the talking anyway because I, I want to hear all about uh, uh, what's going on Saturday at the Hop Knot. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you ready for me to to talk? Or are you going to give me a, a heads up, or how does it all work? Oh, go ahead. You're you're on with us live. Uh, so yeah, go awesome. ahead. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Give us uh give us the uh, give us the rundown, and and if you want to tell us about uh, who you are and your involvement and everything. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, uh, you know, some people out there might even know me uh, in your <laughs> listening land. Um, I'm Heather Stockwell. I've been in New Hampshire now for over 50 years and, uh, you know, grew up here. And uh, five years ago, I uh, really got more into politics than ever before. My, my father, you know, in full disclosure, my father was a state rep and uh for like 15 16 years or something and uh i didn't really get into politics until later in my life when i finally started to have my own opinions and um understanding things uh better and not so afraid to kind of talk about it more right um and one of the things that uh i you know i organize around healthcare and it's just one of the issues that um i've struggled with most of my life and i am realizing the more i talk to people um, I'm realizing how many issues people are having with actually accessing the care they need. Uh, pause, big sigh, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a problem, uh, you know, when people have to start a GoFundMe just to, just to afford to be able to get a treatment or even medication sometimes that are really super expensive. Um, so what's happening down at the Hopknot is we're having this healthcare town hall. People are welcome to come, share stories, like talk about what's going wrong with getting the health care that they need. Like we, we are really trying to build this supportive community. Um, this, is a, this is kind of a different campaign that uh, that I've worked on, at least because it's really like a, it's like a narrative campaign as opposed to like we're going to change things with legislation, right? Yeah. And changing the narrative, you know, sounds maybe maybe easy, but um, not always. It takes you know coming on shows like this, getting the word out there, talking to people, um, because nine times out of ten, I find people actually, no matter what side of the aisle they're on, if they've struggled with healthcare. They agree that we all need some kind of national health program plan, um, and so in order to do that, we we are really kind of attacking or or trying to. Uh, it's an anti corporate campaign, right? We want to change the narrative that that corporations really have any public good in the system at all, um, because as far as I can tell and I think a lot of people would agree, that they don't, that they actually report, you know, billions of dollars in profits while everyday people that need care are starting GoFundMe's or or just not getting the care that they need or they're rationing medication. I mean, this has become so common with people. Um, It's really frightening uh, that people people are literally dying. So... um, yeah, I mean, that's sort of it in a nutshell. Uh, we eventually might get, you know, in another house session, we might get to a place where we're like, okay, we need to change this regulatory thing to help hold those insurance corporations accountable. Because right now, they kind of have free reign. They get away with stuff. They make so much money, they can mm-hmm. pay, they can totally afford to pay any fines, and they mm-hmm. just keep going or find a new loophole. 
so we're sort of watching for those kind of things, like yeah. what might happen. I don't, you know. Yeah. Uh, in New Hampshire, we we pretty much have almost everything is privatized at this point. All the Medicaid plans are, you know, managed care privatized. You know, plans sold through insurance companies, right. and Medicare is doing the same thing with Medicare Advantage. Uh, those are all um, private private plans, and now um, some of those plans, the Medicare Advantage plans, are open to private equity to get involved in making money, more money um, off of our care that we're, we're not getting. So when I say we're building a community of folks, we're building a community of folks of, that have been harmed by mm-hmm. the insurance system, right, that we have, a, our private insurance system. And we're helping folks, you know, just to know their rights mm-hmm. and to know that there is, appeals, there is an appeals process. It's quite arduous. But it is the avenue that we have uh, to make our complaints, right? Um, every every plan has a little bit different uh, policy. Like some might, you have to get it in within you know thirty days or ninety days or one hundred and twenty days. They don't, um, they don't make the process very easy. But right. that's part of, that's part of what we're trying to do is like help people out with with that process and, uh, you know, even being with their, with them on phone calls if they need that kind of backup. Um, in some cases, we might refer people to this. Uh, we have a team of national lawyers uh, that are working with us. They can help advise. They won't represent you because they're no. uh, working uh, on this campaign. But they can help advise you on what to do next. And, in so, you know, in many of those cases, we, uh, we take like a collective direct action together to help overturn those denials. And we've actually been successful in a couple of cases, like one in Chicago, where a woman went for just simple blood tests and got, it's supposed to be, you know, supposed to be covered according to her plan, mm-hmm. but then she gets stuck with a thousand dollar bill. Yeah. It's, you um, know, it's sort it's that kind of thing that's, that's ongoing. And a thousand dollars, you know, maybe it doesn't sound like much, but, you know, I had one for $6,000 and somebody else, we, we all wrote, uh, we all wrote letters to the CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Mexico for a woman named Brittany who has uh, several rare diseases, could only have the surgery in California because there's like only six doctors in the country mm. that do this or specialize in this. Yeah. And it, was they, then they had everything approved, and then the, the they they backed out somehow. They found some loophole, backed out, and she was stuck with a four hundred thousand dollar bill. No, it's it's and it's it's maddening. All the phone calls actually got got it overturned. Oh, not really? By the insurance company, but by the hospital. Oh wow! No kid. Okay. Well, so that well that's positive then. Yeah. Just a just a couple of thoughts on what you were saying, Heather. You know, with um. You mentioned people starting GoFundMe campaigns, and and I remember a few years ago when I uh, just in doing some reading, I, I because I'd I'd been a little bit naive to this, I just assumed that when people started GoFundMe campaigns, it was because maybe they, um, you know, maybe they they just didn't have any health insurance and something catastrophic had happened or something like that. What I did not know, and I don't remember the numbers, maybe you know, um, but uh, hmm. but I was uh, shocked to learn the percentage of people who start medical GoFundMe campaigns who actually do have insurance and have full coverage, but uh, quote-unquote full coverage, because uh, what ends up happening is, uh, even with full coverage, the insurance company, if they can find a good reason, or a, uh, not a good reason necessarily, but what they can justify, uh, they'll, they'll find a way to deny you, because, um, so even, you know, so you can have in- insurance and and, uh, and, and and still get denied uh, for for the coverage that you need and and you know le- I mean let's be blunt let's you know let's look at it uh, the, the the reality of it is this it it is a uh, you know the in, and look this is coming from a free market capitalist saying this but but you know <laughs> let, let, but let's address it honestly when it comes yeah. to when it comes to the insurance companies um they they make their money from the premiums that are paid to them and at at whatever point it is that, you know, you're an asset as long as those premiums are being paid. At whatever point it is that your premiums uh, no longer justify financially the amount of money that they're having to pay out for your care, at that point, mm-hmm. you go from being an asset to a liability. So if we're really, right. be- so if we're really being blunt and honest about it, at that point, <clears throat> what they would prefer 
from a business standpoint is that you die because they, <laughs> they don't want to have to keep paying for you. You you were you, you were making them money with your premiums. Now you're costing them money. They would rather you die. And that's the blunt reality of it. And that and and realizing that and really fully understanding that was part of what brought me over to the side of, you know, I, I think we should I think we should follow Canada's model. I think we should have single payer uh, uh, socialized medicine. I really do. I, it took me a while to get there, but I'm, I'm all the way there at this point. Uh, and, and, wow. but, and, and the other thing I would add to that, and again, that's coming from a free market capitalist, but, but the other thing, and this is a principle that I've always held is that we live in the most prosperous, most innovative, most successful country in the history of the world. And yet we somehow Taking all that into account, we somehow can't figure out a way to make sure that every single American has access to adequate or better than adequate health care. I don't buy it. I've never accepted that. You know, because there's always people who will say, well, Matt, you just can't. Yeah, you just can't do it. It'd be nice if everyone could have the health care that they need. But yeah, there's, <laughs> just, there's just no way to do it, Matt. Sorry. It's like, no, BS. Of course, there's a way to do it. Uh, yeah, I call BS on that, too. I mean, yeah. We're obviously smart enough, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, people have come up with some plans. It's a matter of really sitting down and hashing it out. I mean, I, I'll leave, I've even talked to people that, you know, work for or own insurance companies, and they'll outright say, you know, you're, you're talking about something that is different from insurance. You want something that you can use every day. It doesn't fit the model for insurance. Right. Insurance is something you don't want to use that you only use in an emergency right like, there are two different things and we're expecting the insurance industry to do it for us and it's not the right it's not the right <laughs> not the right fit right because they have a for-profit model and right. granted everybody needs to get paid um i but i i agree like i come from a conservative family i've had two businesses and i have found loopholes to get out of paying, you know, don't hire people full time mm -hmm. or things like that. That was sort of the ticket not to have to pay mm -hmm. employees uh, for employees' health care programs. Right. And now you talk to business owners and they, they will tell you over and over again if they supply any kind of health insurance to their staff that it's their number one increase of cost. Oh, yeah. Every, every year. Mm -hmm. And... What ends up happening is if somebody has a big enough business, those insurance companies will actually negotiate with them to bring that cost down, but they negotiate some of your care out of it. Yes. And good good luck if you need that care because it's no longer available to you. Yeah, exactly. It's um no, it's it's a, it's a terrible system when you really get down to it. And it's like, you know, and I'm I'm no great fan of Elizabeth Warren, but uh during the um during the 2020 primaries, you know, she was talking about, you know, she supports uh I, I think she supports uh, socialized medicine and you know, she was saying, you know, because you always hear people say, "Well, I like my health insurance. I don't want the government messing with it." And she said, "Well, you know, everyone likes their health insurance until they actually need to use it." Well, I've said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, like yeah. like when I before I was, uh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm I'm self-employed, but uh, when I used to work for, uh, I, I used to manage, I, I was a store manager for a, a national a retail chain. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, and we had really good health insurance, uh, but, uh, you know, but I never thought about it either. Like, you know, if I had to go to the doctor, which, you know, knock on wood, I've always been pretty healthy overall. But if I had to go to the doctor, you know, it's like, okay, I pay the 10 or the $20 copay, whatever it is. And then, you know, that's it. And forget about it. Never even see a bill, you know, whatever. But um, if God forbid something catastrophic had happened to me, you know, who knows what I would have been facing? You know, it's it's easy to say, oh, I like my health insurance. I really liked my health insurance when I worked for that company, but I never mm -hmm. really, but I never really had to use it either. Aside from, you know, if I had to go, or you know, if I went to the eye doctor, you know, like when I had LASIK done or something. Although no, actually, LASIK wasn't covered, so that's a bad example. Although it's still worth doing, but not not that expensive either. But um, but anyway, but you, you know, especially when, not in Canada, right? That's true. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I, I actually uh, went with a family member for for some LASIK surgery in Canada uh, more than a decade ago now. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's pretty common. I mean, we're also seeing you know what I what I think people are referring to as um, 
you know, health care, um, va- not vacations, but like, you know, it's like health care travel. Mm-hmm. People go to other countries. People go to Mexico and have their teeth done in Molar City. They literally have called it Molar City. Oh, no kidding. I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. and then, you know, for other things that other countries might specialize in, um, that's kind of crazy. I mean, there was also a report out, I think it was just in the last year or two, that um, the age, that, that more cancer diagnoses were happening at age 65, and they figured out or they surmised that that was because that was when people got on Medicare. And oh, could supposedly afford it, although I mm-hmm. will just say right now my husband just got on Medicare and um, it's not really looking like they're going to pay for much and there's a lot of confusion on a lot of things between the provider and the insurance carriers. Right, right. So, um, you know, I feel like we're, you know, if, a, if a pandemic hasn't fixed, <laughs> hasn't forced us to, you know, kind of reckon with uh, what we have going for our healthcare system i'm not quite sure <laughs> you know what what needs to happen here uh honestly and one of the things that i'll just say like during the time that my my husband and i faced this six thousand dollar bill or denial um we felt really alone we didn't know who to talk to yeah we struggled for like a full year we made phone call we spent 40 to 80 hours just on phone calls back and forth, you know, not even necessarily including all the time on hold. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just trying to work it out. And, you know, uh, eventually they sent it to collections, and we were like, hey, we're appealing. We're appealing again. Yeah. We're, we're not taking no for an answer here. We don't have $6,000. And, uh, you know, frankly, their reasoning was about a code, and my response was like, you know, so it's, they said, oh, it's patient responsibility. And I was like, but it wasn't, my res- wasn't the patient's responsibility in the first place to have the code the, for right. the pre-authorization. Right, That's right. Not, not our jobs. So a lot of the labor is getting put on the patient. Also, that I, like from my own personal experience, but hearing from others, I'm like, man, I have to do it all. Like... If I want a new doctor, I have to go do the research. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to get a referral to a specialist. I have to do the research or just take what they give me. Yeah, isn't that nice when you're already dealing with an illness and now on top of it, you have all this other nonsense that you have to deal with just to get your illness treated? It's uh, right. It's, it's right. And if you have some kind of something weird or not too common, um, mm-hmm. that just makes it all the more um, difficult yeah. to get your care. Yeah, because they really want you to just have something that everybody else has. They already have the paper. They have the prescriptions ready to give you the paper and the prescription and go out the door and buy. Yeah, they're not used to. They're just not used to dealing with complex patients, or the system isn't set up for complex patients. Uh, partly because it's all run by algorithms at this point, right? Yeah, I suppose if it's um, if you're, if you're talking about illnesses that are rare. There's probably not much money in uh, researching those uh, or figuring out how to treat them, so it just uh, it just doesn't end up happening. Right. Yeah. For sure. And if you're and if you're part of any minority group, whether you're BIPOC or uh, female, uh, you might be a lot of assumptions get made. Mm-hmm. I'll just say that. Or if you have some kind of disability, um, a lot of assumptions. Or you're fat. I mean, God, I have uh, been. As a, as a fat person, I mean, I can count at least four times that a healthcare professional has assumed that I must have diabetes. They just assume And I it? don't. Oh, really? Uh, they, they, I don't. They, they, <laughs> just they just... clear, I could show you the blood work yeah, to prove yeah. it, and I often now joke with my doctors sometimes about it, um, even the yeah. ones that assumed that in the first place. Yeah, they, they just assume it? That's, that's bizarre. Huh. It's and and I found you know recently found out or last year sometime was on some national call and I was in a you know people were talking about their healthcare stories in this breakout and I mentioned it four other people on that call said same thing happened to me yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> I was 
like I felt a little bit better that like, oh, this isn't just me. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. This is, but it's also like, wow, uh, this is happening over and over again. And, um, you know, I don't eat a lot of junk food. I eat a really good diet. I, yeah. You know, I do eat some junk food like most people. Sure, but, sure. Um, you know, I eat my, my veggies and, you know, eat a really balanced diet. I, uh, you know, so being scolded by the medical community <laughs> that I'm not uh, taking care of myself is kind of, you know. Yeah, I can see. Wrong. I, I can see how that would be frustrating. Hey, by the way, uh, so so this event, it's happening at the Hop Knot, of course, which uh, also happens to be our amazing sponsor here on the program and one of our woo, woo. sponsors here at WMNH. Uh, how did you uh, get connected with the Hop Knot? Um, just, I guess, through through some friends and stuff that said, hey, this is a great new business. We should go and uh, support it. BIPOC owned. Uh, yes, let's, uh, you know, they also had a great Juneteenth celebration this mm-hmm. summer, mm-hmm. which I really liked because what I, what I found with, you know, when, when we as a country now recognize Juneteenth this year, I felt like a lot of the Juneteenth celebrations got very sort of well corporatized sure yeah quite frankly you know it was like the town and you know the ymca or the you know this business or that business took over the thing and um it kind of ruined it for me because Mm. i was like yeah but this isn't supposed to be about making money right right now (laughs) (laughs) like unless Unless maybe you're a bipoc owned business, so let's support that, right? Like this is the this is a let's do it. Right. Uh, so anyway, you know, that was part of it. I wanted to find something uh, downtown. I wanted something like close to like people uh, because we're going to have this town hall. We're going to have uh, you know we'll have some coffee and nosh whatever something to nosh on in the morning, and uh, that'll start at ten ten thirty. We're going to start the town hall and then at noon we're going to end the town hall it's a oh yeah it's a hybrid event um you won't get the coffee and the food stuff obviously if you're uh going to join virtually but yeah. if you register for the event and say you want to attend virtually you'll get a zoom link oh cool So we'll have a camera and microphones and stuff uh set up there so that uh people can really be engaged and immersed in in a live event in a maybe maybe in a different way that they're they're used to. Um, they're really trying to hard to uh, trying trying hard to make it accessible for for anyone because obviously it's uh, we wanted. To, I thought Manchester is kind of middle of the state. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm a statewide organizer, so strategically I uh, feel like it's it was a good place to be. So afterwards, we're going to have lunch and. And then um, for those who want to stick around and, and help out and get more involved, we'll be doing some, we'll have a brief training, like sort of over lunch uh, with our field manager. And uh, and actually, she's from Iceland, so knows all about what ah. what their uh, healthcare system is like. Yeah. And then we'll go out street canvassing, talking to people on the street and giving them some information, trying to get them to maybe sign our petition. Mm-hmm. If, they, if they have a denial, we definitely want to talk with them about about it and see if we can help. Yeah, yeah. No, that's excellent. Uh, that's uh, that's great work that you're doing. And uh, and um, so, uh, so it starts at 10 a.m. I just want to make sure we have the times right. So it starts, yeah, basically starts at 10. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Starts at ten. We'll have lunch around noon. Um, they're going to have a bunch of sandwiches ready for us right at noon, yeah. so that we can just kind of keep keep our our schedule going, get people, you know, fed and out on the street, really ready to to talk to people. We have like a little. Well, it's, a, it's I would say it's not like a strict script. It's sort of um, like here are some opening questions you can ask people. Here's some of the facts. You know, here's what we can do you know, for you, with you, um, things like that. So people feel hopefully really comfortable getting on the street and talking to people. Right. Oh, yeah, and some facts. You know, I mean, honestly, in 2019, New Hampshire was number one, or not number one. We were, um, sorry, we're number one in uh, premium rates. That's that's our claim to fame. Oh, I didn't but know that. we also have double the national average of denials, Um Kaiser Family Foundation that does a lot of health care, you know, surveys and reports, briefings and stuff. They 
they put out this thing that's uh, this report saying 17% across the country New Hampshire came in at 31.9% in 2019. Oh my god. And I wow. thought, wow, what is up happening in New Hampshire? It's come down a little bit since the pandemic, but I feel like now that we're sort of out of that era, we're going to start seeing an increase again. Yeah. Uh seems seems likely. Yeah, well that's that's uh well that's frustrating. Um, and, and, uh, Heather too, uh, b- before we, uh, before we let you go, you've been very generous with your time today and we appreciate it. Um, is, is oh, there... thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, and, and we, we should make this a semi regular thing too, because the work that you're doing is very important and I'll, I'll let you and, and Jenny figure that out. Of course, she does the, the scheduling, but, um, oh, cool. uh, but a- anything you want us to know about, uh, websites or resources, uh, that people should for know about. Sure. Yeah, for sure. I'll give you a couple of things. Careovercost.org is the national website for the campaign. Okay. So especially if you have listeners that are out of state, that's going to be the place for you to go and get engaged in this campaign. If you're in state, I'm the, I'm the local organizer in New Hampshire, and uh, on our website, which is radmovement.org, uh, and that's like a couple of clicks in. You'd have to go to campaigns, and then sure. you'd see healthcare or healthcare justice or something. And then when you click that, you'll end up on the healthcare page, and you'll see. I think the first thing you you come is a thing to click on for care the care over cost campaign. So you can sign you can sign that petition right online on our website, um, and not have to you know sign it on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty easy. And, you know, people are also welcome to reach out to me um, at um, heather at radnh.org. That's my email address. Okay. Um, I'm pretty good about getting back to people pretty quickly, um, especially when it's pertaining to this, because we know that uh, our health care is, uh, you know, deeply important. Yes. Absolutely. All right, Heather. Well, I, thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. It's, it's been a wonderful discussion about a very uh, challenging topic. But, but again, uh, uh, I'm, glad that, yeah. uh, I'm glad that you're, uh, you're doing the work that you're doing. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a very successful event uh, Saturday morning, starting at 10 a.m. at uh, our amazing sponsor, The Hopknot at uh, 1000 Elm Street. <laughs> we, love, we love The yeah. Hopknot. So, um, we do, too. We yeah. do, too. So I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope folks will come on out, um, regardless of whether you, uh, you know, RSVP or not, come on down um, and, and, you know, chat with some folks that, that uh, really want to be there and support each other through, through our struggles with our health care system. Outstanding. All right, Heather Stockwell, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate the time. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye now. All right, very nice. So that was Heather Stockwell, and uh, I'm going to uh, take a. Uh, we're going to take a quick break a little bit early because uh, speaking of health, I'm not feeling so well myself, and I need to refill my water. Try to stay hydrated. So uh, yeah, we're going to play another uh, Nick Rolser song. He's going to be our guest coming up in the second hour. I'm really I like his music a lot, so I'm really looking forward to meeting him. Uh, this is a track called Projector. So we're going to listen to this. We'll show some love to our amazing sponsors, and then we'll be back. Don't go away.
to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry. Located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Clementos, Clementos Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Clementos, Clementos Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Clementos Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. WMNH, rip the knob off. And we're back on Matt Connerton Unleashed, and uh, Jenny is on the line. Hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> on the on the heels of her discussion with you about health care, today I caught, I didn't catch all, but I caught some of President Biden's speech, and he's obnoxious and he's upsetting me greatly. <laughs> i got to say it. 
I mean, he got up there, and he's coming across like he's this great savior for health care. He's going to fix everybody's medication woes. You know, he said uh, in his plan next year, insurance companies can't saddle you with more than $3,500 a month in medication. Isn't that wonderful? And when his plan takes full effect, it'll only be $2,000 a month for medication. Now, he's talking about the copay that we pay when our insurance pays for some of your medication. Yeah. But what he's not talking about, and Heather, brief, Heather brought up the whole thing about New Hampshire having a lot of things that get denied. Well, one of the biggest things that get denied is freaking medication. Yeah. Three of the medications that keep me alive, one of which keeps me able to see, my insurance doesn't pay a penny for. Right. Not one dime. You know this. Oh, yeah. You're my caregiver. I mean, you've seen it up close and personal. You've seen me fork over $600 for infusion therapy because without it, I would have died. Yeah. I would have ended up dead. I mean, did, would it have been the disease that killed me? No. Um, maybe a heart attack from the extreme torturous pain, or maybe I would have done something drastic to end my own suffering, like 70% of the people who get CRPS. I mean, we're talking about what Heather's talking about and what, what you were alluding to earlier is that when you really need your health care, well, one, like you talked about, when you need it, that's when you lose it. Because when you get sick, when I got breast cancer, I had many jobs. I had more than one job. But after breast cancer, I had no job, yeah. no job, no health insurance, no health insurance, no access to care or limited access to care. It's basically like holding a bottle of water in front of somebody about to die of thirst and saying, give me a dollar and I'll let you have it. Right. Yeah, they find right? whatever they find whatever excuse they can to deny you. And then, yeah, like you said, if you're now you don't have a job, now you lose your health care. One of my doctors that they barely cover anything on, they claim is out of network. He's the only doctor in the entire state who does this treatment for this rare disease. Right. Literally the only freaking doctor in our entire state. But you get to charge me more money because I need the only care I can get at the only one place I can get in the entire state of New Hampshire. Yeah. Right. There's, you know, how many of us are going to the pharmacy and shopping around with good RX? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. Because if I didn't, my insurance, well, and under President Biden's plan, I would only get saddled with about $150 a month for that one medication. You should, you should explain what that is, good RX, for people who don't know. Some people probably have no idea what that is. Good. Yeah, good point. So GoodRx is actually a discount program, and you'll see, like, their little pamphlets or their little cards in pharmacies. You'll see them in doctor's offices. And what they do is they're a big, giant corporation that goes out there and negotiates prices on medications with not only the medication vendors but also where you're getting it. So you punch in a medication that you need on a regular basis, you can go to, I, I'm not a representative of these people. I'm just somebody who freaking uses it to help get medications. It's called GoodRx, and I believe it's .com. I'm going to type right now just to make sure I give guys right. Yes, mm. Good, G-O-O-D-R-X dot com. Mm -hmm. So you punch in whatever medication it is you need at what dose and how many you, you need in a month. Or if you can try and go for three months if you want to try and lower the cost that way as well. But most people just use it for the month. Right. So you go for the month, and it's going to pull up a list of places in your area that you pharmacies that you can get your prescription. And if you use this coupon, they give you a coupon code. You take a picture of it. Um, I've read it over to the phone to pharmacists that you know have helped me out that way doing it. So I instead of using my insurance that's supposed to cover my medication, I'm using this discount plan to gain access to a lower, more affordable price. Right. So, for example, one of my medications I get at the Hannaford's in Bedford with good RX because if I go there, I can get this particular medication for about 40 bucks. If I want to go to the pharmacy down the street from me, 
Uh, I think there's a, um, it doesn't really matter, actually. It, it, the Walgreens, the CVS, the Rite Aid, all of the name brand pharmacies, I'm looking at an additional 20 maybe $40, maybe even $50 on the, the price. If I try to use my insurance's mail-away pharmacy, which is supposed to be the greatest discount ever, it could be 500 a month for that one drug. So in my case, I'm on three drugs that my insurance doesn't pay a dime for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you add, you know, if you're somebody living with chronic illness, forever diseases that don't go away, that don't have cures, you know, then you're balancing this, this horrific balance with your non-changeable income. And you don't have the opportunity in most cases to go make more money because in most cases you're too sick. But so you're too much of an expense. So basically insurance companies benefit by not <clears throat> tonight covering you by not covering your medications because for you, they're better off the sooner you die. Right. Like The I longer was, you live, the more money you cost them. Like I was saying to Heather, yeah. Hey, by the way, Scott Robinson says in the chat room uh, that he believes GoodRx also has an app uh, that you can download, which might be handy for, for uh, some people too, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Ooh, yeah, definitely good point. And you know what? I haven't done that, and I should do that. Yeah. It used to be in the good old days, you would ha- go to your local pharmacy, and that was where you went for everything, right? They knew you. They knew your family. They knew your allergies. They'd tell you if there was anything going on with your medications or anything to warn you about. That's how it used to work. In that world, our pharmacists had relationships with their patients, mm-hmm. and they knew them, and they took care of them. In the world that we're in now, I have personally five pharmacies because it's the only way to afford the medication. Yeah. One pharmacy is a compounding pharmacy because the pharmaceutical companies won't sell it because it doesn't make them enough money. So you got to get a compounding pharmacy to make the dose for you. You know, you go to one that's with a good RX card, like a like the Hannaford's, like the grocery store. Maybe your insurance is better on mail order for a couple of other medications. You go to your local Rite Aid because maybe they're twenty four seven. You got to have somebody that you can get meds twenty four seven in case of injury, illness, right? By the time you get done, you have five different pharmacies. I don't know how many different pharmacists. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows your allergies. Nobody right. warns you about anything. Nobody even looks at you practically because they don't have time to anymore. Right, right. And you go home with all these pills from all these different places, and you're hoping you're not mixing the wrong ones together or taking them incorrectly. Our system is designed to let people who are chronically ill fail and die. Period. Yeah. And this, you know, yeah, absolutely. Bottom line, Biden's plan is a lot of lip service. It isn't going to do a dang thing for the people that need it most. All right. And that's my story. Is our guest here? Yes, yes. Uh, Nick has arrived. I'm going to bring him in in a moment. So, all right, Jenny. Thank, awesome. Thank you for the call. I'm so, thank you're very welcome. And I'm totally looking forward to this guy. Check out this guy. He has an amazingly beautiful voice. Absolutely. I will let you go. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey, Nick, if you want to go ahead and uh, you can have a seat there at the news desk. There's uh, headphones there, and uh, once you're uh, settled in, I'll get that. Uh, we'll introduce you, and then we'll play a song, and then uh, we'll hit the, we'll hit the uh, commercials and then come back. And, but, uh, yeah, let me, and there's, a, there's a volume knob if you need it for the headphones down. Under, it's right underneath the desk where the, uh, <coughs> yeah. Um, how do you say your last name? Is it Rossler? Uh, Rolser. Or Rolser. I'm sorry. Ooh, I went I went dyslexic with it there. Uh, sorry. Rolser. A lot. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was uh, Rolser or Rolser. Okay, very good. And uh, you, are you from around here? Are you local? Uh, I'm from Newmarket, New Hampshire, around uh, Dover, New Hampshire as well. So kind okay. of seacoast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, gr- gr- that's where my dad lives, actually. Great music scene out there. Yeah, there's some really great musicians in the area. Absolutely. Well, um, I wanted to uh, introduce you, and we're going to play a song because we got to take our top of the hour break. But uh, I was going to play. I, this is my personal favorite of the ones that you uh, requested. We play today, uh, "Crashing." Cool. Yeah. Let's love play that. love this song. So uh, what we'll do is we'll give this a listen, uh, "Crashing" by uh, Nick Rolser, and then we'll uh, show some love to our amazing sponsors, and then we'll be back and we will uh, chat with Nick for a while uh, here on Matt Connerton Unleashed. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. I 
I was drifting down the road Going nowhere, you would know Slipping down a drain Soon began to lose control Time had stopped, my hands froze The car flipped off the pavement Brushed the dirt and walked it off Square one in my brain To the place that I had lost But in the end I would have to lose To gain it Everyone should To the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, three dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. 
Clemento, Clemento, Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Clemento, Clemento, Pizzeria. For delivery, call 603-782-8450. Clemento, Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. WMNH, rip the knob off. Everybody, welcome back. It's hour number two, Numero Dose of Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc. Uh, today is Wednesday, February 15. 2023 and uh, joining us he is at the news desk he is a musician his name is nick rolser how are you nick pretty good wonderful to uh, have you here you're getting some love in the chat room by the way great song crashing that's uh of the ones that you sent uh for today that was my personal favorite oh thank you <clears throat> love that love that song so we're gonna uh we're gonna get to know nick a bit but if you would like to uh if you have any questions at all for nick or feedback or anything uh, you can call the studio line at 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. Uh, I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. You can email me, Matt, at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. Yeah, Jenny in the chat said, love this song. And Mike from uh, Queen City Cabinetry, one of our sponsors here at WMNH, said, this is really, really good. Yeah, that's, um, and you've got a full album, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I have one album out right now. Um, and where did you record? Uh, I recorded at the Noise Floor in Dover, New Hampshire. Okay. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that. Well, of course, so so many studios have, have come and gone over the years, but uh, boy, they got a really great sound out of you. I mean, that's a uh, the whole. Uh, I, I listened to several tracks, obviously, and it all sounds really good. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really great spot. The noise floor. I highly recommend people look into it if you know you're a young musician looking for a place to record. It's it's a great spot. It does a great job. Is it is it new or newish? Do you know? Uh, he's been around for a while now. I, okay. I'm not entirely sure how long. Probably at least ten years. Probably longer. But yeah, it's a cool name. The noise floor. I like it. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, tell us a little bit about influences, because I, you know, I, I hear some different things in your music. But who's who influences you? Yeah, I would say uh, biggest influences are probably no surprise Bob Dylan mm -hmm. up there, um, Neil Young. Um, Radiohead is probably a more contemporary influence. Um, Beatles, for sure. What about uh, any James Taylor? Um, not consciously, but <clears throat> sorry, I got a little see. little bit of a rough throat there. <laughs> I apologize. It's dry in here. No um, yeah, that's <clears throat> that's um, to me that was that was one of my first thoughts was James Taylor, but I can hear the other. I, I can definitely hear Radiohead and Dylan. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you... Um, 
are you uh as far as your vocals are you self-taught or did you take lessons uh it's just self-taught yeah yeah i'm always amazed at how many singer singers i, I meet who uh just have really good voices and, and who are self-taught that's amazing how did you um how did you learn to sing like that like did you did you sing along to other music and just kind of uh because you you know your voice is uh really good and and it's um thank you but it's not just uh, how do i how do i put it it's not just that it's good on a technical level it's good in that you can you uh, like i listen to a song like that and it's um i don't know there's a certain character to your voice it's like the uh, you know some singers can sing something and it sounds really good technically but you don't necessarily get the same feeling behind what they're singing, if that makes sense. But with your voice, and I noticed it on the other songs too, it's like it. Um, there's there's a feeling there, like you can kind of hear the emotion in your voice, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's um, I would say that's uh, authenticity, probably. Mm. Um, you can't really teach that, I guess. But um, yeah, it, it sort of comes through. Either it's there, or it's not. And um, I mean. I guess that's why for me, like, you know, some of the greats like Dylan, it's like, technically speaking, a lot of people have a problem with his voice, <laughs> but I think there's an authenticity to that stuff, especially his stuff in the mid sixties, I think is just absolutely great. Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny uh, when, when it comes to Dylan, you know, I, I personally, I never cared much for his voice either, but he's such an amazing songwriter that you almost, and I don't know if this is common for a lot of people, but if I listen to a Dylan song, I, I it, it kind of, in a way, and I, I feel this way sort of about Neil Young, too. It it almost doesn't matter. Like, the voice at a certain point doesn't matter. It's like, uh, for me, I'm not paying attention to the voice. I'm so wrapped up in the song itself. Does that make sense? It's like the song is really good, so it almost doesn't matter what the voice is like. Hmm. Um, in fact, with Neil, actually with Neil Young on a couple of levels, because his his voice... In and of itself, I I don't necessarily like, but you know, but but again, I get wrapped up in the song. But also his guitar playing, in terms of uh, don't get me wrong, he's a great guitarist, but some of his leads are very strange. Mm. <laughs> but, but the song itself is so great that somehow it works, so it it almost doesn't matter. But um, so uh, how many tracks are on the album? Uh, eight tracks. Eight tracks. Yeah. And uh, do you uh, is everything self written, or do you write with anybody else, or? Uh, just all self-written. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And who um, you you also play guitar, I assume. Yes. Yeah, I'm playing acoustic guitar on that album. Yeah. And and who else is on uh, on the tracks with you? Um, I got lead guitar. Um, is coming from Rainer Vigno, who I believe was here. Oh, Rainer. Yes. Yeah. Maybe last week or so. With uh, Marvel Prone. That's right. Yep. 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 Yeah. That yep. was great. Yeah. Yep. So he's he's a great uh, lead player as well. So he's on there. Um, Jake Smith. Is on drums for a couple of the tunes. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, who else do we have on there? There's some, there's some cello in there. Um, there's some flute in there. Um, I can't remember the names of those people who played. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. I, rec I recorded that album. Well, I released it in 2019. So yeah, it's been. A few oh, years. okay. I've yeah. Been working on a new one, but um, we're getting there slowly. Hopefully this year at some point. The nice thing about your style is it's um, it, there's a timelessness to it. You know what oh, I mean? Thank you. Like like some some music you you hear it and you can you can kind of date it to at the very least a certain decade, if not even more specific than that. But what you're doing, you know it. Uh, you know I, I wouldn't have guessed it was uh, 2019 or or any particular time necessarily. There's a certain it, it's it's just timeless. It's um. It could be released at any time. But you said now you're working on some new stuff now? Yes, that's right. Yeah, back um, back in recording. Um, I've been doing it for a few years now, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Um, at the noise floor as well. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it should be out within hopefully a few months. But, oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah when, it, when it's out, we'll have you back. Awesome. Def definitely. Is it... Um, is it the same uh, vibe and style, or anything anything different about it, other than obviously a fresh batch of uh, songs? Yeah, I would say in some respects it's similar. Um, in others, it's it's a departure. Um, there's a few tunes that I wrote on the piano for one, so that's oh. definitely different. Um, overall vibe is is definitely different. Um, songwriting structure and things are a little bit more experimental, I would say. Yeah, and, yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
Um, is that the Radiohead influence with the experimental huh. part? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, uh, same, uh, same. Is Rainer also playing playing on these? Or he has been playing on a few. Yeah, cool. he's on a few of them. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, do you remember? I mean, have you been writing songs from a from an early age? Um, kind of. I I. Uh, this style of songwriting is is fairly new to me. I, really? I suppose. Uh, yeah, I didn't really start writing until like 2017, 2018. Yeah. So yeah, this is all all brand new. But I would write lyrics and whatnot when I was younger. So it was kind of a different um, approach to the same thing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, do you know? Like, can you put a number on how many songs you've written total, or approximately? Obviously, but um, hmm, probably. I don't know, maybe 20, 25 songs. And yeah. Yeah, not too many. So when you went in to record the album, it, it, did you have to kind of, uh, was it easy to figure out which eight it was going to be on this first album, or did, or did you have to kind of, was it difficult to pare it down? Um, no, it wasn't difficult. It was sort of intuitive. It was kind mm. of just a, um, uh, I went by feel, it. The, the whole album sort of has a, um, a narrative to it, I suppose, on some level. And, uh, so each of the songs kind of is me working through something and mm-hmm. arriving at a conclusion. So it's sort of almost like a movie in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, does the uh, who who uh, who records you at the at the noise floor? Who's the uh, engineer? His name is Chris Chase. Chris Chase. Yeah, he's great. Does he also because obviously a lot of times in these uh, scenarios. Um, the engineer, you know, whether they mean to or not, whether it's intentional or not, winds up sort of almost acting like a producer as well, like a de facto producer. Is is that the case with Chris? Yeah, absolutely. He's he's the best of both worlds, I think, because he he does act that way, but mm. he's very uh, hands off about it as well. Yeah. So he kind of comes in with the right input at the right time. Yeah. Which I love. So. so he's not trying to control it, but he but he has suggestions and feedback and input. Yes, absolutely. He's been doing it for a long time, so he he knows kind of when to to step in and when to to take a back seat. I think. Oh, okay, yeah. that's cool. Um, do you know who else he's recorded? Um, I I think um, Marvel Prone's first album was with them. Oh, okay. Um, I'm trying to think of who else is recorded there. Uh, another great singer songwriter from the area. His name is Dean Harlem. Oh yes, uh, Dean has. Well, he's never been on my show, but he has been on this station many times. Uh, I think, I think more than once at least. Uh, Rob Azevedo, who does uh, Granite State of Mind Fridays after my show, has had Dean on on his show. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so he recorded an album there. Um, I'm trying to think of anybody else off the top of my head. Um, I think another band named Daylo is a, a indie in, indie band that they. Uh, okay. I think they recorded. Okay. Um, there a few years ago, yeah. Um, do you play out? Do you play uh, a lot of shows? Or um, I haven't been too much within like the past, I don't know, six months. Yeah. Um, just sort of been re- recording, focusing on that. Yeah. When you um, because in the area that you are, I mean, it's such a great music scene there. Um, when you do play out, do you uh, do you do a lot of um? shows where it's it's just you do you do the the solo singer songwriter thing or does rainer come and join you or uh or, or jake or, or somebody or I yeah don't... yeah a lot, I, I mean i i love playing with a band it's, yeah it's my favorite thing to do so i i try to do that as much as i can yeah um but yeah sometimes i do solo acoustic sets but for the most part i, I really enjoy playing with a band what is it that you prefer about a band? Is it just the energy, more energy to it, or more energy? It's just collaborative. It's you kind of bounce off of each other's mm. energy, and yeah, that's just so fun to me to kind of do that sort of thing. What do you do more of? Because obviously, you know, like I know from my own experience in bands, sometimes it's hard with um, when you're booking shows, with working with everyone's schedule and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, it, is it? Uh, do you do a lot of the the solo shows too, or what what do you do more of? Yeah, I would say it's probably. Um, I mean, lately uh, I'll do you know solo sets here and there. Yeah, just because um, they're easier to to book, like as you said. So yeah. Um, but when I start really kind of gigging 
uh, this material, especially the new album when that's out. I, I definitely plan to do a lot more um, band gigs. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, uh, is the idea to ultimately have more of a formal uh, uh official sort of band for your music or because it sounds like it's kind of loose right now yeah it is loose to some degree um yeah i i think it, it is pretty interchangeable which is good i mean yeah. obviously it is a singer songwriter i'm not a band so that does give me some flexibility yeah um which is kind of nice because as you said it's it can be difficult to get everybody to be at the same place at the same time <laughs> so, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even just for rehearsals, uh, let alone uh, live shows, in, in my experience, uh, certainly. Absolutely. Um, the new album that you're working on, will that also be eight tracks, or is that going to have more more songs on it? Uh, I think right now it's seven tracks. Seven? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and then when you... Have you been already playing some of that material out, or are you waiting until the album is out to do that? Uh, I have been playing it out. Yeah. Um, yes, I have, yeah. So I'd imagine that's a good way to sort of workshop it in a way, right? So you're more ready when you go into the into the studio. Um, I mean, do you, do you are you someone who likes to be like when you go into the studio to record? Um, do you prefer to be really sort of clear and focused on what the objective is, or do you go in? I mean, because you did mention that Chris will give you ideas and feedback and suggestions, or or do you go in a little bit looser where you know, you kind of know what you want to do, but you're you're open to uh, you're open to whatever. So maybe it's not as um, not as okay. We're going to record this song today, and we're going to finish it in this four hour period. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely open to other musicians' feedback um, and ideas. Yeah, um, I have a general like, sort of vague impression of where I want to go as a final outcome, and yeah. then we sort of. Uh, you know, throw some paint at the wall, I guess, and sort yeah. of see what direction it takes. But, yeah, 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 and that and that's part of the adventure of it, right? Is of, of recording is if you if you think of it that way, and you're open and you're flexible. Um, has anything ever? Have you recorded anything that uh, at the end of it you thought, "Wow, that's not how I envisioned it." I'm, I'm glad it came out this way, but it, it, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Um. Because it's bound to happen someday if it hasn't happened yet. Because it happens, it happens to everybody, and isn't you know not necessarily a bad thing. Certainly, if it happens, but I wouldn't say anything that's been like incredibly shocking. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I've been pleasantly surprised that certain things did sound the way that I heard heard in my head. Yeah, um, that's probably the closest thing to that so Sh far. Sure, but. sure. Okay, well, let's play another. And by the way, what's the uh, name of the album? It's called Amor Fati. Um, that's Latin. Um, it means the love of fate. Love of fate. Yeah. What brought you to that title? Uh, I don't know. I think it was. Uh, I think it was some sort of philosophical <clears throat> thing. But I, uh, I kind of just liked the 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 sound of it. Um, yeah. It was sort of me. Certain point in my life where I was trying to, um, I don't know, kind of actualize my potential and 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 go in the direction I wanted to go in and sort of come to terms with who I was and, and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of just, that name resonated with with that particular period of time, I suppose. Yeah, cool. Um, well, I'm going to let you pick. Uh, what. Uh, so we played uh, Crashing. Uh, what would you like us to, to play next? Uh, why don't we play Venus Flytrap? Venus Flytrap, okay. Um, oh, there it is, yes. All right, cool. And anything you want us to know about this uh, this track before we play it? Um, no, I'll surprise everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So we'll give this a listen. So this is uh, Venus a Flytrap. Our friend uh, Nick Rolser uh, joins us in studio. Check this out. Teardrops fall on the deck Heaven's gates have went unchecked Coral rays and floral scents 
fill the air through an open vent A fog hangs from overhead Calls your name from your bed A siren sings an overture You weren't sure but you noticed that You've fallen way down And there's no way out it seems Suddenly you're standing on a scale that never fails Weighing your soul next to a feather Look down to the ground You're about a thousand feet above the clouds Holding on to thin air They bring you home and steer you in To where it ends and you begin A ball of clay, a formless limb An unobscured amorphous twin You formulate the words to try to justify for your sins As a crowd of judges dressed in stolen robes Stare down their noses for your skin Suddenly you're standing on a scale that never fails Weighing your soul next to a feather Look down to the ground, you're about a thousand feet above the clouds Just holding on to thin air Venus fly, trap you inside That is Nick Rolser with Venus uh, Venus Flytrap. And uh, yeah, you're getting some more love in the chat room, Nick. Uh, Mike from uh, Queen City Cabinetry, one of our sponsors here at WMNH, he says, love this. This is an artist I will start following tonight. Such a great voice. Love the melody. Awesome. Very cool. And uh, Jason Federson also said, uh, I'm digging this. And um, 
Yeah, uh, you're. So you, we mentioned earlier, you're from uh, Dover. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you um do you ever listen to WUNH, the uh, college station there? Um, not too much. I, I've actually played there once, like a few years ago now. At, at the radio station? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, what was it like? Uh, so you got to do, I, I assume it was a solo acoustic thing? No, um, actually, I think I did it. Um, I know Rainer was there. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think it was more of a full band kind of thing, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So they must have a show there where you can you can set up a full a full uh, band. I was just curious. My dad lives on uh, on the Seacoast, and he listens to WUNH a lot. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, he likes college radio. He likes to hear new stuff. It's funny. You 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 all, you kind of don't expect it from somebody that age because um you know people get to a certain point in life and they start to uh, not everyone obviously but a lot of people they get to a certain point in life where they start to um you know it's like whatever they liked when they were in high school that's as far as they go with sure. their, with their music taste. But no, not my dad. He he's you know in his seventies he loves hearing uh, new music. My uncle is like that too. So maybe maybe there's something uh, genetic to it. But um. Are there uh, when you do uh, when you do play out because again there's such a great music scene on the seacoast. Are there any other artists who you team up with for shows? You know, a, a lot of um, a lot of artists, be it, be them solo artists or bands. I know they'll they'll have certain other bands or solo artists who they they work with a lot when it comes to live shows. Um, yeah, I've played with uh, some some pretty great bands. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, I know um, I played with Missouri Pacific. They were a, kind of a folk band oh. um, that we, I played with once. Um, I'm thinking of recent shows. Obviously, I haven't played in a few months, but um, who else is there? Uh, Bus Stop Hill is, okay. is really great. Um, I really like that that songwriter. Um, and he plays in a more of like a folk style band as well that, that's pretty popular. They're, they're called Sneaky Miles. Um, you might have heard of them. Um, I haven't played with those guys, but... Um, they're they're pretty great. Um, yeah, Marvel Prone. I've played with. I played yeah. with them recently, actually. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, we have a question for you in the chat room. N. Saturn uh, from our Greensboro, North Carolina contingent, always asks some really unique uh, questions. <laughs> uh, hashtag Nick Rolser, you rock. We say to you from us. We say, what's your favorite Oasis song? Wonderwall or Cast No Shadow? We say, who are your influences? Hashtag Nick Rolser. So N. Saturn has given you two options uh, for uh, your favorite Oasis song. It can either be <laughs> Wonderwall or Cast No Shadow. Uh, I'm going I'm to go ahead and, and choose a different one, and I apologize for that. But I, I don't <laughs> listen to Oasis too much, to yeah. be honest. But yeah. I, I, I like that song, Don't Look Back in Anger. I think yes, that is a great song. I love Oasis. That is a great song. Absolutely. I loved Wonderwall when it came out, but it, it was uh, way overplayed. Um, yeah, very. Yeah, uh, and Saturn, we can always uh, count on for for some uh, unique uh, questions. Now, who was um, on that track, uh, Venus Flytrap? Who was playing harmonica? Uh, me. <laughs> oh, that was you. So how many instruments do you play? So you play guitar, you play piano? Yeah, guitar and piano. Um, I would say I'm, I'm most sort of... Uh, formally trained not not exactly formally trained but compared to harmonica yes um that that i sort of just picked up i mean i guess i just kind of picked up <laughs> everything but yeah um, that was sort of just a yeah a, a necessity I, I i mean i i learned it through learning i basically learned how to write songs through learning other people's songs i suppose yeah and, um obviously bob dylan being a big influence yeah kind of uh wanted to pick up the harmonica so yeah do you do the thing he does where you have, do you have the harmonica in front of you? I don't know what the apparatus I, is I do called. do the thing. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Is that, see, that always looks cumbersome to me. It, is it, is it hard to be comfortable? You with, get used to it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and what do you do? You just, so you just kind of, you, you, cause you don't actually move the harmonica with your hand, right? So you just, no. you, you just kind of lean into it and. You sort of lean into it and move your positioning of your mouth around and. Uh, yeah. You know, breathe in and out, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is is it difficult to? Because it looks like it would be easier to just hold it, but obviously you can't because you're playing the guitar. Is it difficult to learn to do it that way? Uh that's the only way I learned how to do it. Oh so, no, kidding! So yeah, oh. I never even tried. I just had to do it for you know the the Dylan song. So oh, cool. I suppose I just kind of jumped right into the hard mode. But y yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you uh, do you do a lot of covers in your set? Um, not not too many. Um. 
if when I'm playing solo sets, depending on how long they are, I definitely throw in more covers. Yeah. Um, but with the band stuff, maybe a couple here and there. What do you uh, when you do do covers? Uh, what 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 do you do? Uh, one of my favorite ones that I'm I've I've played it quite frequently for the past couple of years. So I might have to switch it up soon. But um, Radiohead Jigsaw falling into place. Yeah. Is, um, a really fun one to do because it has the acoustic in there, and then kind of that uh, sort of upbeat tempo to it. Um, yeah. It gives like a it's a nice counterbalance to a lot of my music, which can be sort of mellow at times so yeah I, I like playing that one a lot yeah um and saturn says uh we say we love that song don't look back in anger as well too hashtag nick okay great well there you go <laughs> glad i didn't upset you guys <laughs> that's right you don't want to upset well they're very polite in uh, greensboro actually that's and they nice. they use a lot of hashtags love it everything's everything's uh hashtags um as far as uh, the the business side of your music, I mean, do you have a manager or anything, or is everything DIY, or how does that work? Uh, mostly DIY. I don't really have a manager yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how? What was the process like in terms of getting on Spotify? Was that pretty straightforward? Or yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You sort of just uh, you can use a um, I don't know. There's a site called DistroKid that kind oh, of oh yes yeah you put your music on there and then they put it on like everything so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard. I've never used it, but um, I'm well aware of uh, DistroKid. Absolutely, it seems like a lot of artists use it now. I mean, how's how's the experience of of using that service? Pretty good. Yeah, it's it's been good. <clears throat> it's been good. I definitely have no complaints using it. Yeah, everything I've heard is uh, is pretty positive. Do they? Um, where else do they send it other than uh, Spotify? Uh, you can get on Apple Music. I think Amazon has a music streaming software. Yeah, um, YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much everything, really. Is is your album, is it available uh, on all those places as well? Or Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Be, yep. Excellent, excellent. And uh, we should remind people, too. So we're talking with Nick Rolser, and Rolser is spelled R-O-L-S-E-R. So if you're looking for him online, if you're looking for his music, uh, very easy to find. Uh, if you'd like to, uh, if you have any questions or anything at all for Nick, uh, 603-250-6007 is the studio line. 603-250-6007. Now we have our friend EZG, Eric Gagnon, who uh, uh, I, I don't, I'm amazed that he hasn't called in because uh, every musician that I have on the show uh, he likes to call in and ask a very specific question, but he hasn't called in yet, so he might be tied up because he, he always calls by now. So I'll just go ahead and ask you on his behalf, have you ever played in Canada? No. Okay. He's a, he likes to ask everybody that question. I know he'll be sad if I don't. Um, where where have you played? Have, uh, have you toured outside of New Hampshire at all? or Not really. Yeah. Um, kind of just stuck around in New Hampshire uh Massachusetts. Area. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, yeah. and and Mass, you've also uh, yeah. done some shows. I think some gigs in, in Maine, probably as well. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Have you played in Boston? Um, no, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, oh, wow. It's already 20th. Let's play, uh, let's play another song. Uh, what do you, uh, I'll let you pick again. What would you like us to play? Um, how about we play Projector? Projector, yeah, I like that one a lot. Uh, we'll go with that. Anything, uh, anything we should know about this before we hear it? Uh, it's definitely one of my sort of more straightforward songs. I yeah, would say um, less kind of impressionistic in the lyrics. It's it's sort of just about leaving the past behind. Okay, yeah. all right, all right, very cool. We'll give this a listen. So this is a projector uh, from our guest today, Nick Rolser, here on Matt Connerton Unleashed.
Outstanding. That is Projector from Nick Rolser, who is our guest today. And uh, yeah, great, great song, Nick. Hey, uh, listening to that too uh, brought to mind a question. So, when you're e- even when you're in studio, do you, do you play the harmonica that way? Um, not usually. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would that would be the one. But live, you always. Well, yeah, because you have to play the guitar as well. Yeah. So live, you always do it that way. Yeah, yeah that's that's interesting. Um, do you, is there harmonica on a lot of your songs? Um, on the first album, yes. Okay, but this, not so not so much on the new one. This new so one, there's maybe one or two, but I'm sort of moving away from it, I guess. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Uh, we've got a little bit of time left in today's show. If you have a question or anything at all for Nick, uh, 603-250-6007 is the number, 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. Uh, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. I see a lot of uh, positive comments in there. Um, <laughs> and Saturn uh, in the chat room says, uh, we say hashtag Nick Rolser. We are from Greensboro, North Carolina, and we will be performing some covers of New Kids on the Block songs. We say to Mr. Rolser, uh, they are a pop singing group of boy band in the 80s to 90s. Yes, yes, I am aware. <laughs> yes, they're very, uh, yeah, they, they they do a lot of, uh, in Greensboro, you know, they've got it going on with the uh, New Kids on the Block covers. I see, it's, I gotta uh, be down there. Yeah, <laughs> well, if you if you ever uh, tour uh, down that way, you'll have to uh, you'll have to look them up. And Saturn, I mean, not uh, New Kids. Um, very good. Now, do you have any, uh, do you have any live shows coming up, or are you uh, just um, yes. focused on recording, or? I actually do. I just got offered one yesterday. Um, so that is in Boston on uh, St. Patty's Day. Oh. Um, at, it's at, I think it's called the Square Root Brewery and Coffee Shop. Did that literally just happen that you got that uh, booking? I, yes. A friend of mine is, uh, is, is going to play there, so I'm going to be opening. No, it's just funny because I asked you if, you if you'd ever play Boston. I know. I, yeah, there, there you go. It's As fake. soon as I said I hadn't, I <laughs> forgot. I, just, I mean, I just Oh, remembered. okay. <laughs> Well, it's fate. It's a uh, uh, Amor Fati. Am I saying that correctly? That's right. There yeah. you go. There yeah. you go. I love it. So you're going to be playing there St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, St. St. Patty's Day. Um, nice. Square Root Brewery Coffee House. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Yep. It's mm. uh, 8 to 11 p.m. Now, are you? Are there other uh, 
who else is on that or, or are you doing the you're, you're not doing the full three hours or are you i uh, know i'll be playing the first hour i'm opening for a band i believe they're called flat stanley okay my friend uh justin demers uh so he's he's gonna be his band's gonna i think be finishing the night off i think there might be one more band in between us yeah yeah but yeah oh very cool very cool so that'll be your first time playing boston yeah outstanding yeah. outstanding um yeah i've not heard of that venue but uh, there's so many so many places that have come and gone and you know uh, something that's a common uh point of discussion on this show is that you know it's it's it would be nice if there were more places for original music but uh and th- that's always been a problem but you know there's a lot of have you ever run into that uh, situation where you're booking a show somewhere but they only want you to play covers like that it's more of that kind of a venue um so sometimes yeah yeah i kind of just avoid those places <laughs> yeah yeah well of course what you're doing too you know as we talked about earlier you have that flexibility where you know you you know you know some covers but you also you can do either a full band or just yourself and so it really kind of i would think it opens up a lot of um a lot of opportunities as far as where you play so there's so you can afford to say no to places or avoid places that uh maybe don't want exactly what you would prefer to be doing I, I've been in bands where uh, you know we would learn we would learn some covers, but you know I, I always preferred playing originals. You know, mm-hmm. it's more it's more satisfying uh, yeah. creatively, you know, and uh, and 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 whatnot. Um, very cool. So you've got uh, and do you have any other? Is that is that the only show you've got coming up? Is uh, the Boston show? Yeah, that's it for now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, our friend uh, Miriam Banish joins us in the chat room. She says, well, I'm sad I missed the show. I had an appointment. Well, don't worry, Miriam. You'll be able to get it in the archive. Uh, it will be available uh, shortly after uh, we complete today's show. Uh, and speaking of which, it is late in the hour. So, Nick, what uh, what should people know about where to find you online, where to uh, keep, keep up with everything that you're doing, and all of that good stuff? Sure, yeah. So if you want to follow me, um, I'm on Instagram. Just on my name, Nick Rolser, R O L S E R. Uh, same thing with Facebook. I have a music page. Um, I'm on Spotify and all the streaming services. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Excellent, excellent. Um, any, uh, by the way, do you have any uh, live performances online uh, on YouTube or anything? If if somebody wants to, uh... not currently. Not currently. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Cool. Cool. Well, Nick, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Thank you. And I uh, love what you're doing. And um, I'm very glad that uh, that Jenny booked you for today's show. This has been great. And uh, I will let you uh, pick. What would you like us to close with uh, today for a uh, for a song? Let's, uh, let's play Child of the World, if you have that one. Oh, there. yes, yes, yes. I like that one very much. I like all of them. But that one, that one and uh, Crashing are the two that really jumped out uh, to me the most. Oh, cool. Now I just have to... Why can't I find it? I know it's here because I just saw it. Child of the world. How to search for it this way. And uh, while I find that, oh, and I think I found it. Yes. And while I while I find that, of course, I'll just remind everybody, if you miss any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org and at my website, MattConnerton.com. And uh, we will leave you with this. Nick, thank you again. This is uh, Nick Rolser, Child of the World. He came into this world without any sense of control They brought you up and then gave you your own heavy load So now you run around like that chicken you are Head on your shoulders, you don't like to look far You drive by the beach one night, look at the stars And suddenly you feel it It's been so in your face You can hardly let it all in Just a warm embrace Like the one that your mother would give When you were a child A child Child of the world 
just sitting here wishing it might burn The lights are all low and now winter has taken its turn But I've waited my time Now's the time to choose I gave up everything So there's nothing to lose You played the part well And forgot who you are Now suddenly You remember It's been so in your face You can hardly let it all in Just a wall on having your own private heaven on earth The truth has been lying and living through all of your words And underneath faces plagued by disguise A peace like a river sees to your demise Just look in the mirror and Deep in your eyes You know I've always been here It's been so